Hey, what's up guys? So in this video series, I've been showing you basically everything you need to know to run your own games using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. In today's video, what I want to focus on is how to basically create everything from maps to tokens, playlists, compendium files, items, etc, etc, roll tables, that kind of stuff. Uh, this is going to be a pretty bare bones, just get the basic functionality out of the way. My hope is that by the end of this video, you'll essentially know everything you need to know to run the games if not kind of the nuances of how to really make the most of it uh to do everything is like i said it's going to require this whole video series so all of that out of the way i just kind of want to dive right into it and not waste your guys's time obviously like subscribe come follow me on twitch i stream my own campaign multiple times a week you know the drill all my links are in the description below let's just jump right into this so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to we're basically going to cover all everything on this top row here, except for the chat log and the combat tracker. So we're going to go straight to create a scene. Uh, scenes are essentially your maps of this. So uh, you could create folders in almost everything except for the compendiums and the playlists, although the playlists are kind of their own folders naturally. So we're not going to worry about that. Almost everything is basically just asks you to create an entry or a, or whatever. So that's pretty much all the same across the board. Uh, we're just going to call our first thing, just, you know, test map or something and create the scene. That's going to give you sort of a blank canvas to work on. The biggest important thing is the background image for that. Uh, if you have a folder structure set up, you can you can access it from here. You can also choose the file, which is going to open up uh, this, and you and basically you can find the right map file. If you pick something from here, it's actually going to wind up importing it into your folder structure. Uh, for that, we've already got a map set up, so we're just going to set that up. Once you import a map and set it up in here, regardless of what your default scene dimensions are set for, it's automatically going to shift those to whatever the dimensions of your background images are. So for that, we're just going to hit save. We've got our we've got our map here. You can see there's this little buffer zone around the map. That's your players shouldn't be able to see outside the map to see things there. That's for if you want to put things like other token images, so like monster NPCs or something that you don't necessarily want to have on the map, but you do want to have at the ready. Um, the only thing about that is your players, while they can't naturally see outside of the buff, like into the buffer zone, they can move their tokens down into the buffer zone and then they can see. So it's a little weird. Um, you could easily kind of prevent that just by setting up a wall surrounding your main map, which is sort of a good strategy to do. That way your players can never move outside of it. But we'll get into that in another video though. So the big things are accessibility. If you want this thing to be to have this be in the navigation tab up here. You want to set it for navigation and you want to set it for either GM only, which should be obvious, or you could set it for all players. Basically, if you have a set it to GM only, then only the GM will see it up there. The players will not. If you set it to all players and you have multiple maps like that, the players will actually be able to move around map to map on their own. Um, there is a way for the GM to pull the players in there. So for me, unless a, unless I want a player to be able to move around uh, to other maps, for the most part, I leave this to GM only. Uh, background color, I like setting to black just because the gray is a little ugly to me. Uh, grid type, you could set that to square, gridless, or hexagon. Um, for the point of this, we're just going to stick to the square grids. Grid size... Um, default to 100 pixels. Essentially, your grid size is, is one square is what a standard size token will fit into. Uh, you could set the scale here. So if, you know, in D&D, it's five feet per square. But in, you know, Star Wars, it might be one meter per square. So in that case, you might put one, you know, meter or M or whatever, right? So for this, we'll, we'll do five feet per square. Um, grid opacity, uh, basically it starts off at 20%, which means you can just barely make it out. If we jam it all the way up to one, uh, you know, it's, it's much more prominent as you can see. Uh, the only other things that we need to cover for this is token vision, global illumination and fog exploration. Essentially token vision, if you have this turned off, Everybody will be able to see everything regardless of vision. Your tokens won't need vision. All your players will be able to see everything on the map. They'll be able to see through walls, 
etc. If you have it turned on, then your tokens will require vision, which we'll get into in a minute, to be able to see anything, and they'll only be able to see uh, to a certain range, depending on a couple of things. Um, the first thing is whether or not you have global illumination set up. If you have global illumination turned on, it's essentially like turning on the sun. It basically makes everything on the map uh, lit up and visible. If it's turn, if you have this turned off, then you're going to need either your token set up with dim vision or bright vision to be able to see, uh, or they need to be able to set up with uh, light sources, which they can have on their person, like a torch or a flashlight or something like that. Or you can set up uh, light sources on the map itself, which is super handy. And then they'll basically only be able to see into areas where there are light sources and only in the areas that are lit up, essentially. Um, and in this instance, when you set up walls, they won't be able to see through walls. They won't be able to see um, the lights on the other side of walls. And so this is pretty handy to set up. And then there's fog exploration, which basically if this is turned on, Anywhere your tokens have been before or have seen into before, will the Fog of War will remain revealed in that area. If this is turned off, then the Fog of War will immediately cover and reconceal any area that your players cannot presently see into. So essentially, with it turned on, if you're in Area A and you move across the map to Area B, Area A will remain revealed. If it's turned off, then going from area A to B will reconceal area A. Um, for the most part, for me, I like to leave global illumination on and fog exploration on and token vision on for most of my maps. If it's nighttime or if I were going into a cavern and, and light sources are required, then I turn global illumination off and I leave token vision on. If, I, if it really doesn't matter what players can see and you don't mind players being able to see tokens through walls and all that stuff then i just turn everything off and we're kind of good to go so that is pretty much that for what we're going to cover today in the scenes i'll go over every setting in detail probably in my next video uh, so from here let's go to create actor actors are basically your player tokens, your NPCs, that kind of stuff. Um, so when you do this, we'll say, we'll call our player Bob. Uh, you, we could change this to non-player character or vehicle also. We'll start off with the actor. The cool thing here is we can set up the, just by clicking on that, we could set up a portrait image. So for that, there you go. We've got a nice cool portrait image. If we drag this guy onto the map now, you're pretty much good to go right there. So if you have like a cool token set up uh, with, you know, cool border or anything, you could do that. Um, now, if you do what I do in my campaign where I have sort of a portrait, but then I also have a top down mini looking token, uh, you could set up, you could go into your prototype token, go to image, and we can change that to a different image. And now what happens when we drag the token and is, is instead of getting the portrait image, we get this cool second image, which is pretty neat. And there's other modules that give you even more tokens. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can do a lot of really cool stuff if you get creative with that. Um, we're not going to cover the character sheet stuff today. I'll do that in another video. Uh, this video is meant to be a little bit more agnostic and we're, we're not worried about D&D or what system you're using. Uh, so we're pretty much just going to cover the prototype token, which is... Uh, essentially the core settings of this token. Now, for link actor data, this is a very important thing to have checked for any character that is persistent. And by persistent, I mean typically any character that has a name, you're going to want to link the actor data. Um, if it's just like kobold number seven, you probably don't want to link the actor data. And I'm, I'll show you why. So this guy we have the prototype token linked, right? So when we drag two tokens down and we damage one, it winds up damaging both. And if we drag a third token on, it's damaged too. We open up the character directly from the, the, the sheet over there. Uh, we could see he's been damaged, right? If we heal one of them, it heals all of them, right? 
Now, if we were to turn that off instead and drop it there, and now we damage this guy, only this one gets damaged and this one doesn't. So you can imagine if we had like, you know, a, a bunch of orcs, you can set up one orc actor, drag a bunch of them onto the map, and now they'll all each have their own unique hit points. You can also go in there and tweak little things. If you want one to be a, you know, an extra strong orc or one to have more or less hit points, you can tweak all of that in the character sheet stuff. Uh, that's pretty straightforward there. I, again, for any character that is meant to be persistent across all maps and in, in every situation, you want to link the token data. We're not going to cover every single setting in here. The The important stuff is just like, um, this is where you set up that token image. Like I said, you can change the, the scale. So like if you want to do like a large token, two by two, uh, you can do that. And now when we drag the token, now the token takes up a larger area. You could do another cool thing, which is we could set it up to one by one, but then we can actually increase that to two. And now what happens is the token gets, the, the image gets bigger, but it still only takes up that one space. And you could go all the way up to three times the size with that, which is pretty cool. So we could do stuff like that, which is pretty nice too. And then the only other thing is say lock rotation, which is, uh, so if you have a token that looks like this, you might want to move them around. Uh, and so you can rotate them around like this, but let's say if instead we might not want to rotate the token ever, right? So for this, what we can do is we can lock rotation and now there's no... Now there's no rotating the token. Uh, I'm hitting the same keybinds. Nothing, nothing's moving there. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then the only other stuff is say vision. Uh, any character, like we said before with the maps, if you set up token vision, the only tokens that we'll be able to see are tokens that have vision. So for instance, uh, if we turn off global illumination and fog exploration right there, and then we drag this guy down, that guy can only see in that little area, right? The other thing you can do is set up light sources. So for instance, we can do 60 feet of bright red light. You could set it up with like a torch sort of image. It'll pulsate like that. Uh, this doesn't look very good, but <laughs> if you tweak the settings, you can make it look pretty good. Um, and uh, the only other thing is if you want to set up different attribute bars, uh, by default, it gives you two. There are other modules that will let you set up a lot more. I think I've seen a module that lets you set up like 20 out there. So there's there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff. For, for the most part, I pretty much just use hit points. Um, but, you know, there's other stuff out there. Uh, okay, so moving on. Items. Items are, well, we'll just go through it. We'll create, uh, so we've got weapons, equipment, consumables, tools, loot, class, spell, feature, backpack. Uh, we'll go through all this stuff. We'll start off with, say, weapon. Uh, we'll call it a sword or something, okay? Uh, create a new item. Again, you get sort of this default image here, but we can we can hit up our folder here, click on that, and now we've got a cool little sword token. Uh, if you go into the details here, you could set it up with all kinds of um, different properties and stuff. So, you know, is it a heavy weapon, uh, should it be equipped? Uh, is it a simple melee weapon? Uh, you know, just the, the whole range of things basically, right? So uh, once you have that, if we open up our token and we go into inventory, you can just drag the sword onto the token and, or onto the character sheet and boom, you've got the, you've got the sword set up. Um, once it's in the character sheet, you can actually change things and it won't change it up there. So for instance, we could set up as say a finesse weapon and now it's a finesse weapon there. But if we go up here, it's not still set up as a finesse weapon. So once it's on the character sheet, it doesn't remain persistent in the same way that some tokens might, for instance. You can also set up weapons to do, um, to have specific bonuses and do damage and all that stuff. So with that, what we'd want to do is come down here to melee weapon attack. 
ability modifier, default, attack roll bonus. Uh, we'll just we'll just leave that there. Uh, when we come down to damage formula, hit the hit the plus sign. Do one d six plus at mod and set it to say slashing damage. Okay. So now what's going to happen is if we click on the sword, you're going to see this little attack thing in the chat room. Click normal, get the get the attack roll, and if we do damage, you're going to see we do 1d6 plus 0, right? But that's just because our modifier is set to 0. If we change the modifier here to, say, strength of 16, and then we do damage again... Now it's rolling with the plus three, which is pretty cool. You could set up all kinds of other items, consumables, tools, loot, all that stuff. You can also set up classes and stuff. So if we wanted to say barbarian or something like that, we could create that. And then when we drag this into our token, we go over to features and then barbarian is right there. You can have all kinds of details, subclass name, the kind of hit dice you're using. This is all D&D specific stuff, but but you understand, you, you get the point of what I'm what we're getting at here. Uh, that's pretty much it for items. Uh, we probably don't need to go into too much else. Uh, there's a lot more nuance here. I'll go into all that in a future video. Next, we've got our journal entries. Your journals let you do all kinds of stuff. A very cool thing you can do is you can set it to image mode. Uh, you can bring, say, I don't know, we'll bring this portrait in. And now we can hit show players. And what will happen is this image will get blasted out to all of your players. So if you have, uh, you know, if you have anything that you want to, like a portrait of like a cityscape or something that you want to show your players or a magical item or uh, some kind of an effect or something like that, you can, you can do that. Uh, if we want to go back to text mode, if you have a location that has like a cool description and instead of reading it off to your players, you want them to be able to read it for themselves. If you want to do like the Skyrim, there's books of lore all over the place kind of thing. You can type all that stuff out. And then once again, you can hit show players. Uh, there are modules to uh, let you place these things around the world so that your players can see them. Uh, it's pretty cool. Next thing is your rollable tables. This is pretty cool. We'll create a new table here. The roll table formula is essentially what is the die that you're using here. So you could do, you know, 1D6. You could do, you know, 1D203 if you want. You could kind of do whatever you want, right? So just click on the plus sign. You can click on it a whole bunch of times. Uh, you can either do uh, an entity or or a compendium item, or you can just do straight text. So for this, we'll just do straight text. And we've got this range of one, two, three, four, but we could set this up. So let's say we want to really weight this table towards potions or something, right? We can type like uh, four to 10 there, right? And then we could set our die to be a 1d10. So when we roll, you can see it rolled a 1d10, we rolled an 8, and we got a potion. Now, the cool thing with this is, let's say we wanted to set it up for a compendium item instead. And let's say uh, I'm using the D&D system for this. So let's say we set this up for a compendium item, and we set it up for the abacus, right? It's in the chat room now, and what's cool about this is if we open up our character, we can actually drag the abacus from the chat room where we rolled it, onto our token and now you have the item in your character sheet very cool stuff you could do all kind i mean you can the sky's the limit you could do wild magic sorcery tables in here you could do all kinds of stuff very very cool um again more nuance here there's really cool modules that do a lot of really neat stuff with this but this is just sort of bare bones just to give you kind of an overview music playlist is pretty cool uh we'll just do test playlist so you just open up the audio source, go into your music folders, click on one. You can set it to repeat. Uh, you can set up the sound volume, although once it's in there, you can also fix the, the volume in there if you need to. Hit play. You can change the audio around a little bit in there. If you click on that, it opens it back up and you can, you can shift things around. So if you don't want to repeat anymore, you could set it up there. Uh, pretty much the whole thing. Uh, 
you can set the volume for your players here. You also have settings up here, and that is your own personal settings. So if we turn all of that stuff down to minimum, it won't affect the volume of this for your players. So for instance, you don't care what the volume is. If you're not going to listen to the music yourself, you just want it there for your players, you can actually turn this all the way down and basically mute it for yourself, turn that up for your players, and then your players in their own settings can change it from here, which is really cool. So that's that. You can also you know, hit stop, stop on the individual tracks. You can play multiple tracks at the same time. It's very cool. And then finally, we've got the compendiums, and the compendiums are interesting. Um, if you use the 5th edition D&D system, it comes with a lot of stuff already. It comes with tons of monsters, comes with some cool heroes that we can just drop straight onto the map. Once you drop these actors onto the map, they immediately go into your actor folder. The same is true for monsters. So one cool thing that we can do if we wanted to is you can drag items directly from the compendium onto character sheets and stuff. So if we wanted to multi-class here we could just immediately add in the druid stuff we can do you know racial features we can we can add spells rapidly if we want to do that you know what i mean so we can we can do all that kind of stuff you can also create your own compendium you have to set this up for the specific type of compendium that you're looking for whether it's going to be an actor an item a scene so you can literally put maps in your compendium uh, which is pretty handy. Um, journal entries, macros. Macros are great uh, to set up in compendiums because you only get limited space down here in your hotbar for macros. There are modules that let you roll directly from your compendiums, which can be really handy too. But just having, just putting all of your macros in compendiums is super handy. Uh, that way, if you ever accidentally lose one from your hotbar, you've already got it set up elsewhere and you can just drag it right back in. Uh, you can set up playlists. You can do basically everything you would need to do. So it's it's uh, compendiums are really cool. So I hope this video helped you out, guys. This was just a quick little overview of how to set everything up. In the next video, I'll probably go into map details a lot more. Um, and then we'll have to do another one for probably each individual uh, area, actors, playlists, all that stuff um, to give you sort of the, a more nuanced look at it all. I just want to get you guys set up and ready to go. So if the video helps you out, please drop it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. I do stream on Twitch multiple times a week. Come join the community. We've got a really cool one on discord. Also, all of my links are in the description below. I also am running my own campaign, the chords of chaos. It is a massive multi-group multi DM shared world campaign. Don't forget to come check that out. Uh, we are recruiting actively. We have multiple DMs now. Uh, come join us for that. It's, it's very, very cool. Uh, and that's going to be it for this time, guys. So we'll see you all next time.